Hi everybody and welcome to part two of making an ocean aquarium bead. And in this section I am going to be creating the anemone inside the bead. And I am going to be using the pink stringer which are which is the collage picture on the left. But I've also done these in coral and reds and you can use basically whatever color you wish. But if you did not catch the making of the anemone stringer video, I suggest you go back and check that out so you know actually what we're using in this video. So continuing from part one, I have my base bead with my background design all ready to go. And you want to figure out where you want to place your anemone on this bead. And however tall you want it, you start from that height and swipe all the way down to the bottom of your bead. And after that, you're going to add stripes in a fan-like pattern. So you want to start with the stripes butted up right next to each other on either side. And then you work your way towards the center. So you're kind of overlapping when you get to the center bottom. You're kind of overlapping the previous stringer and they're also shorter as they go down the sides so it's like a fan like shape and so you just continue striping down until you have just a very tiny little stringer um, on the outside edges and it's however uh, large round or wide you want it but after that you want to heat the whole bottom section of your stringers and pull to a point and get that excess glass off and so here's a zoom in of layer one. And now I have the video sped up because I'm basically doing the same thing. The second layer is it the same exact way. You're making a fan shape, except for this time you're starting slightly lower. You're right on top of the first um, stringer stripes. You're doing these right over the top of the first layer. And they're just slightly shorter. Make sure you keep your bead warm so the rest of the bead doesn't crack. And you heat the bottom of the second layer and you pull it out. Get that excess glass off the bottom. Pull it out to a nice point and taper at the bottom just like the first one. And there's two layers. And sorry the light was just so bright it washed it out a little bit. And now I'm going to make a third and final layer. You could make more layers. You could leave it at two, uh, but two layers you probably uh, need. I don't think it would work with just one. There, it's just too thin. So uh, at least two layers. But you could put three, you could put five, you, however big you want your anemone. And so with the third layer, I'm heating up and pinching off that excess glass. And now I have my finished anemone. And the last thing I have to do is encase this so it doesn't distort, so it'll keep its shape. So now that I have my anemone placed, I have to encase it with clear so it'll stay three-dimensional. And I like to do what I call spot encasing or dot encasing. They're basically little dollops of molten glass at the end of the rod, either dotted or small stripes added to the surface of the bead. And what I want to do here is I want to encase from where the anemone meets the base of the glass. So I want to encase that area, the very top of the anemone, all the way up to that first or top layer. So I'm basically making the clear glass the same height, if not a little taller, than the actual anemone. And this will keep it looking three-dimensional in your finished bead. So you want to have all that white so it'll keep the uh, anemone uh, stringers from actually melting down and trying to merge with your base glass. It'll keep it all three-dimensional and looking really nice in your finished bead. And so now I'm just adding more encasement over the top. I'm totally encasing this anemone around the bead. And I'm not worrying about the rest of the bead because other elements are going to be added later. 
So it's just this section I'm worried about right now. And I have that totally encased. And there's the three-dimensional anemone in your bead. And that's it for this section. Thanks for watching.